I'm Chemaka J. Oaduka, and this is Africa in 10 Minutes, reporting from the Pedini Boss Showroom in Lagos, Nigeria. Join me as I bring to you the top business news of the week as reported on Footprint Africa. Dangote opens coal mine in Tanzania. Angola China trade increases by 50.47%. And Footprints Africa interviews Mr. Wahid Olagunju, the Acting Managing Director of the Bank of Industry Nigeria. And now the news in detail. Dangote Cement Company has expanded its footprint into Africa as the Ministry of Energy and Minerals in Tanzania has awarded the company a 10 square kilometer plot of land to mine coal for its operations. The factory has an annual capacity output of 3 million tons and the company seeks to help Tanzania double its annual output of cement to 6 million tons. In other news, the National Bureau of Statistics has said that the Nigerian Postal Services generated a total of 8.84 billion Naira in the year 2016. According to a report published by the Bureau titled Annual Postal Services Data 2016, stamp duty generated the highest amount of revenue of 4.09 billion Naira, representing about 46.34% of the total revenue generated in the year 2016. The head of the upper chamber of the German parliament has said that Germany has a lot to gain by helping African nations' economies. She said, and I quote, we are faced with refugee situation and to save ourselves the escalation of this problem, we have to tackle the root cause of migration by helping African countries to be economically strong and buoyant. This is why we must help Africa. Moving on, in an article published by the Managing Director of Footprints Africa, Barista Osita Oparugo, various reasons why Nigeria remains an investment haven are stated. In the article titled Nigeria Still an Investor's Delight in Africa, Oparugo highlighted the various viable sectors and the factors that influence their viability in terms of investment. The article is available via the Footprints Africa news platform. The Kenya National Shipping Line, which has been dormant for decades, is set for a revival. The shipping line, which has the potential to contribute over $3 billion to the country's economy, is expected to create over 3,000 jobs for Kenyan youths, a number that is set to increase to 6,000 in the next five years. It is also expected to take Kenya back to its position as a seafaring nation of historical repute. In investment news, the government of Ivory Coast, in collaboration with VITIB, has solicited the expertise of Mauritian investors to set up a biotechnology, information, and communications technologies free zone in Grand Bassam, modeled after the cyber city in Ebene. Moving now to East Africa, the International Finance Corporation and the UK's Development Finance Institution, CDC Group, have come together in a venture to improve logistics infrastructure in Kenya, in a region where lack of quality international standard warehousing space hinders business growth and economic development. They have announced a joint investment of $35 million. Trade between China and Angola increased by 50.47% in January, according to a press release by the Angolan Embassy in Luanda. The notes which cites official Chinese data released by the Macau Forum shows that China sold products worth over $167 million to Angola and bought goods, mostly oil, valued at over a $1 billion. And finally this week, in an exclusive interview with Footprints Africa, Mr. Wahid Olagunju, the Acting Managing Director of the Bank of Industry, stated that the One Billion Naira Fashion Fund no longer maintains a bias to women. He stated that male and female entrepreneurs along the value chain of the cotton, textile and apparel industry can access the fashion fund. This is to enable them to explore the huge export potential of the industry. Now, male and female entrepreneurs along the value chains of the cotton, textile and apparel industry are free to access the fashion fund of the Bank of Industry. And they have indeed been accessing them. And we've been, uh, we've been supporting male and female entrepreneurs who operate along the value chain of the cotton, textile and uh, apparel industry. Because that's an area where Nigerians are highly talented and gifted fashion. Most of our fashion designers come up with products that are appealing not only to Nigerians but also to foreigners. There are huge export potentials for our fashion business men and women. So that's why we are supporting them. That concludes the trending news of the week. Stay tuned for a recap of the headlines. Aliko Dangote opens coal mine in Tanzania. Nigerian Postal Services realizes 8.84 billion Naira in the year 2016. 
Germany stands to gain in supporting the African economy, says the German parliament. Footprint Africa chief publishes article about investing in Nigeria. Kenya to revive national shipping line. Ivory Coast woos Mauritian investors to develop a biotechnology and ICC free zone. IFC CDC invest $35 million to develop modern warehousing in Kenya. Angola's trade with China rises by 50.47% in January. And Footprint to Africa interviews Wahid Olagunju, the acting managing director of the Bank of Industry. This episode of Africa in 10 Minutes was recorded at the Pedini Boss Showroom in Lagos, Nigeria. Pedini Nigeria Limited has over the years provided superior and quality products to all customers. Pedini has a leading role in the kitchen design world and has continued to evolve to adapt to the demands of modern designs and lifestyle. For more information, visit www.pedidinigeria.com. For questions, comments, or to keep up with the trending business news, stay connected. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and connect with us on LinkedIn. These news and reports are called from Footprint to Africa. For daily updates and more business news in Africa, visit www.footprintsafrica.com today. Footprint to Africa, business news made in Africa by Africans.